गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन लास्ट टाइम वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट सम ऑफ द यूजेज ऑफ द एड जॉबसन अलॉन्ग विद दैट वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द कैटलिस एंड द टाइप ऑफ द कैटलिस वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट पॉजिटिव कैटलिस निगेटिव कैटलिस अलॉन्ग विद दैट द सेल्फ कैटलिस टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट द टाइप ऑफ कैटलिस द क्लासेज ऑफ द कैटलिस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द स्टेट ऑफ मैटर when we will study about the state of classification on the basis of the state of matter the first class is called homogeneous categories in the case of the homogeneous the reactant and catalyst both have same phase that means they are either liquid or gas if the reactant is liquid the catalyst will also be liquid if the reactant is gas the catalyst will also be gas if both are solid then in such condition generally reaction is not possible so generally liquid and gaseous phase that means the fluid phase they are surviving in the fluid phase so when the state of matter of the reactant and catalyst both are same then in that specific condition you can say that the catalyst is a homogeneous catalyst when you are seeing the example of such type of the catalyst you can see the dehydrolysis of alcohol in the process of formation of alkene you can see the alcohol is liquid as well as the catalyst which is used in that process sulfuric acid that is also liquid so that is one of the example or the dehydrolysis or the hydrolysis of ester dehydrolysis of ester sorry dehydrolysis of the strip in the case of the stripification and hydrolysis in the case of the ester in both the cases the sulfuric acid is used as a catalyst and that is liquid as well as the reactants are liquid so that is the condition of the homogeneous catalysis so the second type of the catalysis is the heterogeneous catalysis and in heterogeneous catalysis when you will see the reactant and catalyst both are in different phase that means if one is in gaseous phase the second one may be in solid phase if the one is in liquid phase the second one may be in solid phase so these are the two different type of the catalysis in the case of the heterogeneous catalysis sorry in the case of the classification of the catalyst on the basis of the state of matter so there are two type of the catalysis the first one is called the homogeneous catalysis and second one is called the heterogeneous catalysis so we are we are going to study about their mechanism how the catalysis takes place in the case of the homogeneous catalysis and in the case of the heterogeneous catalysis and what is the role of the adsorption in explaining the heterogeneous and homogeneous catalysis along with these of the different type of the catalyst two more factors are also working out there the first factor is the catalytic promoter what are the catalytic promoter we say that the catalytic promoter is the material which is responsible for maintain so for enhancing for promoting the catalytic property of any catalyst that means if catalyst is not working properly then the material which is capable to promote the action of the catalyst are called the catalytic promoter and in the case when catalyst is working some of the materials just kills the catalytic property of the catalyst then those of the materials which are responsible to kill the catalytic property of the catalyst are called catalytic poison so along with the catalyst there are two another factors two more factors which can explain which can determine the variation of the state of uh, sorry rate of reaction and that is called the catalytic poison and catalytic promoter so here we are seeing the intermediate theory for the homogeneous catalysis what does intermediate theory says if we are showing with the help of the diagram with the help of the diagrammatic representation this is the reactant which is turning in the form of intermediate which rechanges in the form of the product in the presence of catalyst 
then how the proceeding of reaction will take place if i am showing it with the help of the graph this is the graph which is suggesting the reaction is proceeding from reactant to product and this axis is representing the energy if the reaction is proceeding surely the reactant will turn in the form of intermediate and again the intermediate will turn in the form of product that means two step process will be there and what will be the energy of intermediate whether that will be greater than the reactant and product or lesser than the reactant and product surely the intermediates have higher energy this is the reason why they are called the intermediate this is the reason why they are responsible for the determination of the rate of reaction so intermediate have the greater energy we are assuming that this is the energy of the intermediate so the graph the representation will be somewhat like this one this is the intermediate in this process this much energy will be needed for the proceeding of energy proceeding of process this minimum energy which is needed for the proceeding of the process is called energy of activation we are representing it with the let with the term ea this is the energy of activation now from where you will get this much energy we say that it is the collision of molecule which is responsible to provide this much amount of energy so when the molecules are randomly moving within the system within the fluid system within the solid uh, gas system when they are randomly moving then at any place they will collide with each other and after collision they will release energy so sometime the collisions are perfectly oriented but sometime they are not perfectly oriented and sometimes they are very much nominally colliding with each other so in those of the collisions which collision will be capable to provide energy equal or greater than the energy of activation that will be called effective collision and that collision which will not be able to provide this much energy that will be called an effective collision and it is only the effective collisions which are capable to proceed the reaction sometimes we think that the orientation oriented collisions are the only effective collisions but it is not true if i am taking example of sports if i am taking the example of cricket then generally you will say if the ball is hitting in the center of the bat what is the chance there is maximum chance to reach towards the boundary and if it is hitting on the side edge is taking then there is lesser chance to reach the boundary but generally this is the general condition but sometimes we find that you are hitting with the center of the bat but there is a fielder a good fielder in the way and that fielder is not allowing the ball to reach to the boundary so there is a oriented collision but that is not a effective collision how that will be effective if the shot have this much power that fielder will not be able to stop that shot because of the power of the shot or the ball have this much power that it takes the fielder out of the boundary itna tej maar dijiye ki fielder ko hi leke wo saath mein boundary mein chala jaye even possible nahi hai fir bhi aisa hum assume kar sakte hain then in the condition when fielder is not capable to field the ball or the ball have this much power that it can put even fielder out of the boundary then the result will be boundary or six but in the case when there is a edge but ball is running backward then what happens if wicket keeper is not capable to reach to the ball the ball which reach to the boundary so in this way we can see that sometime oriented collisions are not effective collision and sometime even the non oriented collisions are the effective collision now we are coming back to the molecular collision so if the molecules are capable to give this much amount of energy the reaction will proceed otherwise the reaction will not proceed and it is only the effective collisions which are responsible to give this much amount of energy now the next thing if we are assuming that out of 100 only 10 collisions are providing this much amount of energy and or we are if classifying these are the collision this is the collision 
with the maximum amount of energy you can see the effective collision or the oriented collision here this is the second type of energy collision and this is the third type of collision energy this is ea1 ea2 and ea3 we are considering so in these of the cases only ea1 is providing energy equal or greater to the activation energy so this is the only collision this is the only energy which is capable to proceed the reaction now what happens in presence of catalyst this catalyst first react with reactant and forms catalytic intermediate reactant catalytic intermediate that converts in the form of intermediate which finally turns in the form of product so in this process the first reactant turns in the form of reactant catalyst intermediate this is reactant catalyst intermediate and this one have energy in between intermediate and reactant now what happens now the process will proceed in two different steps i am just removing these of the energy level that is the ea1 ea2 ea3 to again explain the process so now the reaction will proceed in these two steps in the first step this one will need need a small amount of energy and in the next step again it will need a small amount of energy with respect to that of the ea that is the energy of activation so the energy doesn't vary the energy difference between reactant and intermediate remains the same but what happened that energy breaks into two different parts and the process becomes easier the rate of reaction becomes greater this is the way how the catalyst react this is the way how intermediate theory explain about the catalysis we can take another example of this type of system if you are going anywhere on the first floor second floor third floor kaise jate hain with the help of the ladders seedhiyon se jate hain whether it is easier or tough seedhiyon se jaane ke liye chote bacche bhi upar chadh ke ja sakte hain लेकिन अगर उन सीढ़ियों को हटा दिया जाए तो बड़े बच्चे के लिए भी एक जंप में पूरा फ्लोर पार करना 12-13 फीट को जंप करना शायद पॉसिबल नहीं है द प्रोसेस इज गेटिंग इजियर बिकॉज यू आर डिवाइडिंग द एनर्जी इनटू स्मॉलर पार्ट्स सिक्स इंच ईच दैट बिकम्स इजियर सिमिलरली द बिग एनर्जी इज डिवाइडेड इंटू स्मॉलर पार्ट एंड द प्रोसेस बिकम्स इजियर द प्रोसेस बिकम्स फास्टर बट देयर इज सम प्रॉब्लम in the case of the intermediate theory we are not capable to explain about the action of promoter that is the catalytic promoter as well as the action of the catalytic poison we are not capable to explain these two things the action of promoter and action of catalytic poison we are also not capable to explain about specific nature of the catalyst especially the enzymes they are very much specific towards the reactant they catalyze only a specific type of the reactant then how any catalyst is specified towards any reactant that cannot be explained on the basis of the intermediate theory and this is the reason why intermediate theory is used only for the homogeneous catalysis where the catalyst is liquid or gas and in those of the cases the promoter poison etc doesn't act and there's no need of the explanation of the specific nature of the catalyst so the intermediate theory is only capable to explain the catalysis in the case of the homogeneous catalysis that is not capable to explain the action of the heterogeneous catalysis so in the next class we will study about the heterogeneous catalysis we will study that how adsorption play role in the process of the catalysis and how the catalysis takes place with the help of the adsorption in the case of the heterogeneous catalysis in the case of the catalyst when it is the solid and how the activity and selectivity of the catalyst acts and why the enzymes are which very much specific towards its reactant okay thank you and have a nice day